So, I get asked all the time, what's the difference between Canada Goldenrod, Solidago Canadensis, and uh, Tall Goldenrod, Solidago Altissima? You know what, let's just throw the Giant Goldenrod too in there, Solidago Gigantea. In this video, we're going to try to break down some of the traits that are going to separate those three. We're going to even talk about some of the subspecies that makes it even harder to separate those three. At least in the Great Lakes region, we should feel pretty confident to be able to tell Solidago altissima, and Solidago gigantea, and Solidago canadensis apart. But because of the, the growing range of Solidago canadensis into the Great Plains in, in the southern United States, and um, in some of the Solidago Altissima subspecies, there's going to be some crossover. So we're going to be looking at other features that are going to kind of tell those apart. And, uh, and stick with this video, and hopefully by the end of it, you'll feel a little more confident or a lot more confused on how to tell those three apart. Uh, so this is, this is, we're going to start out with Solidago Altissima, Solidago Altissima. So Solidago Altissima is going to be, it's going to have a hairy, it's going to have a hairy stem. It's going to have a hairy stem. There's a lot of insects on this, there's spiders. Um, the inflorescence is going to be more of a narrow pyramid, a more narrow pyramid in Canadensis, as we'll see. It's going to be more open pyramid. It's uh, pyramidal, more open pyramidal. Like, look at this one. I'll grab it over here and rip it off as enough. So you can see here, it's very narrow pyramidal. It's, it's, um, for the most part, all three of these species are going to have somewhat secund um, flower, uh, flower heads on the, on the, on the uh, inflorescence, so that means they're all kind of facing one way. On Altissima, as you can see, they're a little more messy. There's some going down, some going up. And on Canadensis, what we'll see is that most of it is going up. Let's start with these leaves. So again, the, the stem is gonna be hairy. And if we notice these mid calling to upper calling leaves, these leaves that are higher up on the stem, they're going to be um, three nerved. They're gonna be three nerved. You can see the three nerves, one, two, three, with that middle one a little stronger, but clearly three nerved. Um, and it's gonna be pretty much toothless pretty entire uh, to somewhat to, this one's a little bit serulate, a little bit of teeth on it, but for the most part, it's, it's a little more entire. Uh, it's a little more entire than we're gonna see on like Canadensis. Now, uh, Solidago, uh, this is Altissima Altissima, again, and that's what we get around the Great Lakes region for the most part. There is, uh, there is variety Gilvocanescence Gilvocanescence. Uh, some people put that in its own species. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, a great botanist, Justin Thomas, um, uh, talks about, uh, mentions that the leaves of Gilvocanescence are a little more gray green and uh, are not like uh, a, a baxily, so on the bottom of the leaf, not really soft, hairy, a baxily. So each one of these flower heads, each one of these flower heads has, uh, has the involucre, and the involucre, this is gonna be key in, if you're in the Great Lakes, this is key in separating Altissima, Altissima uh, from Canadensis. This in, involucre is gonna be over three millimeters, usually 3.2 plus millimeters long, uh, 3.2 plus millimeters long, whereas it's gonna be under three millimeters in Canadensis, Solidago Canadensis, at least here in the Great Lakes. Look at that. Look how, how it's, it's somewhat secund on this lower one, but see some of them, it's a little more messy looking than what you're going to see in Canadensis. It's a little more messy than we're going to see in Canadensis. Now, the, where it gets us is in uh, Gilvocanescence, you know, the Great Plains variety. Now, that's going to be under, that's going to be under uh, three millimeters, like two to three millimeters long for the, the, um, invoke, uh, <laughs> involucre, uh, bracts, which are the, these, these filleries. And, um, and so that's that makes it a little different. So then we have to think about the 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 tighter array, the tighter pyramidal array, and then the 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 leaves to really tell this apart from Canadensis. And one other thing is this usually starts blooming a week or two after uh, Solidago, at least in the Great Lakes, a week or two after Solidago Canadensis in uh, Solidago uh, Gigantea. So here's a, a bunch of Altissima. Uh, the habitat is kind of old fields. It, it grows, uh, uh, you know, nitrogen dumps, well, high nutrient soils and so forth. Um, it can become quite weedy. All, all three of these can. Uh, I think uh, maybe not so much um, Gilvocanescence. I just don't know that, 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 uh, that variety as well. 
All right, so uh, this is Solid Eagle Gigantea. It actually took a hot minute to find some with actual flowers on it because it's kind of at the end of its flowering stage. And so with Altissima, it's already going. So what we have here is Gigantea, a variety Gigantea. And we'll talk about what makes that variety uh, a variety here in a second when we look at these leaves. So a couple things to note is that the stem is gonna, this, it likes it a little more wetter, likes its feet a little more wetter. I think it's facultative wet here. And uh, the stem, and we'll take a closer look at this, but the stem is gonna be, uh, gonna be more hairless. It's gonna be hairless, um, made with a little bit of hair in the inflorescence, usually a little bit of hair in the inflorescence. And then the teeth are gonna be very, very toothed or serrate, very, very toothed. Um, in this inflorescence, when we look closer, it's, we're gonna see it's a lot more secund. So it's all, like they're, they're on more one facing on one side than, um, than solid egg altissima. So let's take a closer look at that. So in first looking at these leaves, you can see that they're, again, with all three of these, they're the, kind of the same size all the way up from the bottom up. Um, and then look at these teeth. Look at the teeth compared to what we saw with Altissima. Look at how, how many teeth there are. And then it has this glaucus, this waxy bloom, this glaucus stem, hairless. So variety Gigantea, variety Gigantea, Gigantea is going to have hair, a little bit of hair on the midrib here, and slightly scabrous. Not much, but slightly scabrous here on the top. Slightly scabrous here on the top. So the leaves on variety uh, Leophila, uh, the variety the variety Leophila is going to be hairless on both sides, uh, unlike you know uh, variety Gigantea, which has that that hair on the midrib. So the inflorescence is you know terminal. It's got that terminal pyramidal inflorescence, kind of an open pyramidal. Um, uh, the leaves again are triple nerved. So one more thing with the stem. See this hairless glaucus stem. Sometimes it's it's kind of a greenish color. And then right over here, you see sometimes it's this reddish color as well, this kind of smooth reddish color. It's still got that glaucous, waxy coating on it. All right, and that's Solidago Gigantea. Solidago Gigantea, the giant goldenrod. All right, we found all three of them at the site. This is Solidago Canadensis. Solidago Canadensis. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about the couple varieties too uh, here in a minute. But one thing to note is uh, the habitat, it, this is kind of on a on the a woodland edge, is a, this is, um, uh, it kind of overlaps somewhat with Altissima and its habitat, Altissima, Altissima. Uh, and note that the flowering, Altissima is in full bloom right now, and the flowering here is just finished. It's already going into fruit, the flowering's going into fruit. And right away you can look, and we'll look closer here in a second, but you can see how secund, how nicely arranged they all are on one side. And remember the Altissima is a little bit, a little bit more messy. So let's take a closer look at some of these features that we've talked about um, to really get a good grasp on Canadensis here. Look how, look how nicely arranged those are up and down. Nicely arranged those are up and down. And right when I saw this, the flowers are noticeably smaller. They're going to be um, two to three millimeters. Uh, these ones are actually clo really close to two. They're just a little over two, so they're very short. They're very short. Um, again, that nice secund. Uh, uh, good one. You can really see how broadly pyramidal it is. How broadly pyramidal it is. Let's let's take a look at the at the leaves here to really get a good grasp of this thing. So these mid calling leaves are going to be more serrate. They're going to be more serrate. So you see these teeth going more down the line than what you're going to see on Altissima. And there is some overlap there because some Altissima you see you see a little more teeth, especially on this distal end here. Uh, but these are overall more serrate. Let's take one off and take a look at the backside. So there's two varieties. There's a variety Canadensis and variety Hargari. And this is Hargari, so it's gonna be hairy, evidently hairy, all the way along the, 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 uh, the stem. And it actually, even the backsides of the leaf are gonna be hairy all the way across, all the way across. Look at those three veins, all the way across. Well, on Canadensis, um, on Canadensis, it's uh, variety Canadensis, it's gonna be sparsely hairy on the stem. And, uh, and I think it's only hairy on the veins. I think it's only hairy on the veins on the backside of the leaf where it's hairy all the way across. All these noisy cars driving by, people need to ride their bike more. So, Solidago Canadensis, Solidago Canadensis. So, uh, in summary, you have Solidago Canadensis, we have Solidago Altissima, we have Solidago Gigantea. With Gigantea, again, having those two leaves, they're gonna have, uh, it's gonna have a glaucus, it's gonna have that glaucus stem, that glaucus stem, um, and then that separates it from, uh, Altissima, Altissima, which is going to have hair, hairy stems, right? Hairy stems. And remember, the involucre on Altissima, Altissima, variety Altissima, is going to be over three millimeters. 
over three mil millimeters. So in the Great Lakes region, that'll separate it from Canadensis, which will be under three millimeters, which will be under three millimeters for that involucre. Because uh, Canadensis also has that hairy stem. But now if you're in the Great Plains and you have galvacanescence, that's gonna be smaller than three millimeters, but you're gonna wanna look at that toothiness. So remember in Altissima, overall, Altissima is gonna have uh, the mid to upper calling leaves under the inflorescence, it's gonna be no teeth. It's gonna be no teeth or a few teeth. And it'll be more regularly serrated or toothed in Canadensis. And that's consistent within separating Altissima, uh, both varieties with Canadensis. The Canadensis, again, it's gonna bloom earlier. It's gonna bloom about the same time as Gigantea. Gigantea's blooming period lasts into Altissima more than Can Canadensis does. So um, uh, Altissima is gonna be the late, late last to bloom. It's gonna be more of a closed pyramidal inflorescence and uh, Canadensis is gonna be a more open pyramidal inflorescence. Uh, and I would say that even on the inflorescence, again, Canadensis, they're more succumbed. So it looks more organized and nicer. Um, and uh, yeah, so in, in short, that's how you, you separate them apart. And I hope this video helps you and I hope you have a little more confidence telling the difference between the Canadensis complex.